Rachel Turco. I'm the Exhibit and Outreach Coordinator for the Community Arts Center. And we're very, very, very happy to have you here for this exhibit. Um, just a little note. Um, so four numbers 101 through 132 in the program. Those are the photography and those are on the columns. They will be in red marked as 1 through 32. So they will not be 101 through 132. That's just something for your knowledge. Um, but yeah, so without further ado, Rebecca Fender. Welcome, everybody. And first of all, I would like to thank Cambria. Here we go. <laughs> Community Arts Center of Cam Cambria County. Uh, for having my show. Uh, this has been amazing, and the young woman that introduced me, Rachel, has done an amazing job. Uh, my daughter Angela and I came down on Thursday. We unpacked the paintings and the photography. We laid it out on the floor, and this young woman by herself hung all of this. Oh yesterday. So give her a big round. <laughs> now as you all know, the title of my show is God's Glory and God Inspired. So I want to take a moment and thank the Lord for what He has given me. So if you'll just close your eyes and tell them that. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today, and I just thank you for the blessing that you have bestowed upon me. Let me help people understand how this all came about. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In the blessed name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. I'm not good at that. <laughs> yes, actually. Uh, but the one thing... I, I thought about a lot of things to talk about today. And I thought about talking about technique, et cetera, et cetera. But the most important thing is how I got here and why I'm here. I'm not here because of me. I'm here because of the good Lord. Because if it were not for him, these canvases truly would be white. I go to a canvas, I have no preconceived idea, and I just start picking up stuff and slattering and slicing with a palette knife or a brush or a stencil. I have no preconceived idea. I have no composition in mind. And I can tell you, the few times I've tried to do that, it's been a mess. So I'm going to tell you a few stories about some of the things behind me. Because a long time ago, I guess it's in 2017, um, I could hear the Lord saying, OK, you have talent. I've given you talent. I want you to use it. It's like, you OK, guy? What do I do? I've written some. I've done photography. I really had not painted since college. I was not a major. I hadn't painted, had a brush in my hand for over almost 50 years. And one Sunday at church, I went to Pastor Josh and I said, this is really weighing on me. You know, will you pray with me about what direction I'm to go? And that afternoon, I went into Pittsburgh, and those of you from Somerset probably recognize the name Judy Musser. Fantastic watercolors, um, a lot of abstract work. And when I was in high school, I actually babysat for her sons. So I went into Judy's show, and I went in with the thought of asking her to mentor me. Well, Judy's not a spring chicken anymore, and in 
the way that only Judy could do in a very polite, dignified, kind manner. She said, basically, I'm too old, I have health problems, I can't do this. And I was fine with that. So I came back that day, and that was on a Sunday. <coughs> and Monday I thought, okay, I'm going to find books when I'm scratching. And I started looking on Amazon, and I came across this one book, or a series of books, written by Nancy Raynard. And I went to her site, and lo and behold, her cell phone was right there. I thought, oh yeah, right. I'm going to call her. I'll never hear from her. She'll never answer. Well, she did. And you can't tell me that that wasn't planned ahead, ahead of time. So after a half an hour on the phone with Nancy, that was, I think, in July or August. By September, I was on a plane to New Mexico, and I studied for almost four solid days with Nancy in her studio. And from a little girl from 27,000, 2,700 feet to go to New Mexico, oh, did I suffer for four days. That altitude change was unbelievable. But anyhow, I came home, and that's when I started painting. And I have watched a lot of videos from different abstract artists and just gleaned what I could from this one, that one. And after a while, some of the ideas surface long after you've watched the video. So right now, I want to talk about kind of slides. This, this is when I knew I was doing what I was deemed by God to do. I don't know if you can see the face, but this is called the crown of thorns. Yeah. And um, unfortunately, Penny and Hilmar couldn't be here today. They were my mentors from Flintstone, Maryland. I started out with Penny in photography. And then over a period of time, they started mentoring me, mentoring me and critiquing my work. But took this piece down, and Hilmar um, takes and turns everything, every which way. And I had my back to him, and all of a sudden I heard him go, oh my God. And I turned around and he said, the crown of thorns. I had painted this upside down and never saw it. You think God wasn't calling me to task at that point? It was never seen. Uh, this is another piece. This is a piece of photography. I was actually on um, the ski trail. Yeah, the ski trail, but the cross country trail. And this was an old warming hut. And it was in the fall, as you can see, the trees are bare. And I was taking a picture of a reflection. That's all I saw. Got home, and I'm working the photos. And the gentleman there in the blue shirt, my husband, he goes, oh my god, Rebecca, look at that. I almost deleted the picture. This is called the window of hope. It's all dark. And my camera metered through the whole cabin and put the backyard and the brightness in the bottom pane perfectly in the middle. <laughs> Yet thank God didn't push the button. I sure as heck didn't set that up. So this actually now resides at the hospice house in Somerset in a smaller form. Um, the burning bush. Another God-inspired piece. Um, 
redemption, our old selves going up and becoming, going home to God. This is Yeshua, and it's Mary, baby Jesus, and the wise men. You may see it, you may not, but that's what it means to me. And that's mother and child. Um, this is the rented veil, and any of you that are artists and work in mixed media or acrylic, if you ever make a boo-boo and you feel like you should, oh my God, I'm going to have to throw this away. Well, I was using transparent red oxide, and it was supposed to dribble out, and I used my fingers a lot. And it was just as he was coming home. Well, it didn't dribble out, it squirted out. And all of a sudden, it looked like a surgical table. And I'm there with my spray gun, my water, and I'm spraying and wiping and spraying and wiping. Well, it turned out to be an award winner. <laughs> so if you do acrylics and you make a mistake, have a, have a spray bottle. <laughs> it cures a lot of things. <laughs> this is creation. It's just kind of one of those things that came. Um, it's the light and the dark, the green and the sea. Um, take it for what you will. But this one, I'm almost positive that there's two other paintings under this. Uh, a lot of times when I don't like what I'm doing, I just smear something over and start again. And I love using stencils to get texture. I love, this is surgical gauze. I use that a lot. It's kind of hard to work with, but it's fun. But the stencils painted over, it gives a lot of texture to work. And that's one thing I'm about. This um, is called crucifixion. And if you look at it, you almost can see people and you can see the blood of Christ. So. Most of these pieces have come early, especially this one and that one. That's why I feel that this is a God-inspired show and that God, I, on my business card, says, God paints the pictures, I just hold the brush. And I truly mean it. The one thing, um, as you know, I'm a color person. God gave us beautiful colors in this world. And when I look around today, I am an interior designer. I've worked in that field for, I guess, 50 years or more. And I'm finding in flooring, in upholstery, car, car colors, they're turning us into a neutral world. And I hope through this show, you get an appreciation for color again. I walked into Ashley Furniture a couple months ago, and I just looked, everything was gray, black, or white. I said, God gave us color, let's use it. The other thing that I hope as you look at my work, we pass over so many things. The minute details. God puts beauty in gravel, in rocks, tree limbs. It's everywhere. Mm -hmm. But with our busy lives today, a lot of times we don't take time to look at the nooks, the crannies, the shadows, the nuances of the color of the flower. And he's put their, them there for our enjoyment. So I invite all of you Whenever you look at things, take a minute and take a really good look. You might find a real prize and a real joy. So, any questions? Okay. Where do your, uh, <clears throat> how do you decide on a title? Is it a, do you know what it is before? <laughs> does it emerge or how does it? You should have been here Thursday. <laughs> it's like, what do you think this looks like? <laughs> I truly don't 
like titles for abstract work because you know people have looked at my work and you know pictures on my phone uh, and they said oh I see this even Rachel said about the one black and white that she could see the oh the sickle the grim reaper so I hate to really name them because it eliminates the person's ability to put themselves into the painting. Uh, and so many people say, well, I don't understand abstract. There's nothing to understand. <laughs> if you don't see something for yourself, that's fine. Do you like to look at it? Yeah. Do you like to look at it a lot? Yeah. Do you, does your eye travel around through it? Yeah. Well, then you got it. It doesn't have to mean anything. It is enjoying what you see. Not what it means. What it means to me has nothing to do with it, except this group actually. <laughs> they mean something to me. Um, but abstract's easy, just like it. Anyone else? Oh, jeez, come on, guys. Do you, do you have a favorite painting? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, Crown of Thorns, of course, because that, that solidified that I knew what I was doing and <coughs> what was wanted. That, oh, jeez. <laughs> Um, oh, the rented veil. <laughs> the rented veil is always going to be special to me because it was screaming and yelling and going, oh my God, what am I going to do? <laughs> so that was a very emotional pain in that day. Mm. But other than that, um, they're all special. <laughs> That's my daughter. Uh, sometimes you just kind of know. You look at it and you take a palette knife or a brush or a painty hand and you go, and it's like, I don't want to do that. Um, sometimes it's really hard to tell. Sometimes the painting tells you. And if it's not, not done, I'm probably going to paint over and start again with something else. Sorry. Does that probably explain why? What color do you start with? Or do you may change your mind and just grab another color? No, I, I look at the tubes of paint. And the one thing I don't do, I, I was talking to a woman here in the front. I don't pre-mix. I put pure color on the canvas. Especially, you can see here with wavelength, I put the pure color on the canvas and I might daub it in different places, but I'll work the mixing of the color on the canvas with a palette knife more likely than a brush. But I, it's just, okay, I feel like turquoise today. Maybe I'll put a little orange with it. You know, there's no rhyme or reason to what I do. Mm -hmm. Jeff? That, that helps, uh, you kind of relieved me of the, because I, I was never a real big fan of abstract, because I could, because I was always trying to figure out what the, what the artist was thinking, so you relieved me of Thank having you. to figure out what you're thinking, because it can be whatever. You know, yeah, it's, yeah, it's whatever you want. So I look at it differently now. Cool. How much time do you spend on an average painting? <laughs> Which layer? Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I had one little painting. We were getting ready for church. It's not here. It was sold. And it was an 8 by 8. And it took me probably 3.15 minutes. And it was awesome. It was called Oregon Inlet. Um, I have worked on paintings for weeks, you know, 
do something, put it away, do something, do it, put it away. It, there was no rhyme or reason to time. And, and I know a lot of you are artists in here, and I'm sure you're backing up on that. Sometimes it just happens right, right then and there. And other times it's like a laborious effect. It just never comes together. Friendship. I know how, you, how hard you work every day of the week, because I'm a customer not frequently, but every so often, and you're so good at what you do. And you must be very tired at the end of your working day. Is your studio wonderfully comforting, and where is the studio? <laughs> right now, my studio, um, I don't know how many years ago, uh, we were blessed with a commercial L-shaped desk big and it just fits in my room and my husband installed it I have a pegboard where not pegboard but push pin surface where I can put all my paper stuff that I use in mixed media that I can get maybe ideas from them it's chaotic it's always a mess and for a long time I am not allowed to sit on the floor to paint anymore but we've been in that apartment for over 20 years now, and the rug in my studio has probably been there for 30. So it's my, what I wipe my brushes on. <laughs> <laughs> I sit on the floor, my palette knife, my brushes. I have paint pants that could walk by themselves. They're so hard with paint. Um, someday I may, I may take and frame that rug. <laughs> so my studio comfortable yes for me anyone else they'd scream and run anything else um, when I, you say mixed media in your program most of these are acrylic correct mm -hmm. what is what do, they, what do you mix it I mean is it oil is it ink is it no, um, I'll use uh, the liquid. Um, I don't like heavy. Um, I don't like the. Oh, what is it called? With the, the long drying time. But it's acrylic um, liquid paints. They're testing my memory. <laughs> <laughs> but where the mixed media comes in is the gauze. Okay. It is the crackle case. It is uh, the glass beads. It is tissue paper. It is anything. There's one somewhere around here with buttons on. So it's anything that interests me or that I put on the canvas and looks good and gives me a jumping off point. So I do use uh, those two paintings over above the coffee. Those were done in Santa Fe. And Dan, um, oh, Dan, yeah, Dan, he's an international artist. And oh my god, a, a, a leftover hippie. <laughs> and he brought in very high grade sand, like a glass sand. And we would throw our paintings in that and then scrape through it and add to it. So those two actually have a lot of glass sand in them. my mind 
and work with color. And I hope that maybe other shows will come from this. So it, it's his gate, not mine. Angela. Okay, you were saying that for some of the work that you were doing, the question I asked earlier about you know, um, with the painting, you said sometimes you end up uh, painting over your original title. What do you think is the most number of times you painted over something until you got to the point where you were happy with what you painted? I'll deal with you in the ghetto. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. In other words, do you throw some of those canvases in the garbage and say, this no, is it? I never do. Well, wouldn't that build up the paint to where you would no, actually would add character to it, I guess, in a way? Yeah. Um, whenever I paint over something, sometimes I go over it with gesso, not too often. Um, I just start looking at the texture that's there the, and the colors I don't like and start blocking out. So it really doesn't get that. I, I think subconsciously I might be aware of that, but the thickest, heaviest paintings I have are the two over there with the sand. Those puppies are heavy. Mm -hmm. they, it's funny because they don't look it. Yeah. But, but that sand is. Yeah, they're, they're heavy. I think Rachel will attest to that. <laughs> Some of them. <laughs> yeah. But I never worry about the thickness um, because can you, can you scrape anything off? Sometimes, like, yeah. I've, had, I've scraped whole canvases and had the most disgusting color paint laying on my, my, on my palette, you could imagine. And it's like, okay, you're definitely starting over. But I guess for those of you that work in acrylic, the biggest thing is don't be afraid to make a mess. Because, for example, that was a mess. That's beautiful. That's one I liked. And look how it came out. It's won multiple awards. But <laughs> that day that I squirted the, the transparent red oxide on it, <laughs> it looked like a murder scene. Yeah, my God. So that I don't know. I know watercolor is much more trying, you can't correct mistakes easily. Um, oil paint, I haven't done for years. I like the quickness of the acrylic. I like um, the fact that you can wash it. I mean, we hose some of these down, yeah, in class. So to me, acrylic has so much more leeway as far as working the media uh, compared to a lot of other disciplines. Because if, if you're doing layers and you want to get it done quickly and you want to use stencils and paper, etc., you have a quicker drying time. And in this type of weather, if it's not humid, too quick sometimes. So it's just learning to manipulate that medium for the result that you want. But never be afraid to scrape. How often do you paint? I mean, is it well, every day, every couple um, days, whenever the mood hits you? Or? Well, no, prior to, um, in 2020, I had back surgery, and by probably September of 2020. Um, I couldn't sit on the floor of pain. Uh, my studio wasn't set up for seated work. And I, somehow when you hurt real bad, you don't have a lot of creativity. And so up until that time, I mean, my poor husband could roll over at 2 o'clock in the morning and where is she? Oh, she's in the studio. So I I paint, I like to paint, paint a lot, and I'm hoping shortly to get back to 
a regular painting schedule, but mostly when the mood strikes me, and it seems to strike me a lot, as you can see. <laughs> Well, I think we are probably at the end of the Q&A. I thank you all for your interest, and if you have any questions, 